This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and the latest news from Alpena Community College with Dr. Olin Joynton. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Brad Summers, the Executive Director of the Boys and Girls Club of Alpena. Good morning, Brad. <laughs> Good morning, Nancy. And I saw all the stuff you have written for me. Holy smoly, we have a busy, <laughs> busy, busy month coming up at the club. First thing we want to talk about is the prom dress giveaway. Yep, in March, um, in the preparation of our prom uh, with the Alpena High School, we do a prom dress giveaway each year. Uh, we gave about 100 dresses away last year, which was a lot. Um, but it's an opportunity for kids, for girls, to uh, acquire those dresses. It, dresses are expensive. Oh, yes. Um, and we've been very blessed with the fact that we've had a lot of donations from the community and stockpiled a lot of very nice dresses. Um, they're all cleaned. They're all, you know, hemmed. Uh, we have an actual seamstress on site yes. that actually hems the dresses for the girls. Um, it's always kind of a project that I felt a little uncomfortable running when I used to be the Youth Volunteer Corps Director, <laughs> but uh, Chris Akern, our new YVC director there, is going to do a wonderful job this year and already has some, you know, potential uh, uh, resources for us to utilize in the community when it comes to uh, fixing fixing the dresses up for the kids. And you also offer, um, you do a drawing for prizes from professional haircuts, manicures, pedicures, dinners, prom night, tons of things. We really try to make it an experience for the kids. Um, you know, prom could be a very, like I was saying, it can be a very costly event yes. for people. So, you know, whatever we can do to drive down that cost for, for, uh, for the girls and for the boys too. I mean, we don't offer a lot for the boys, but we do offer, you know, some dinner coupons things like that um, and it's just a raffle they come in they check out the dresses and you know if anything appeals to their senses they can take it home with them okay and just um, put a shout out there to any local merchants if you have any services you'd like to donate for prom night please give boys and girls club three five six zero two one four a phone call please and offer those services all right and it's, uh, as we're sitting here talking it seems amazing <laughs> that it's time for YVC um, sign up because there's snow on the ground, it's bitter cold, it's terrible. You're right, school's going to be done in three months. In three months. We're, we're pretty much done with school. So um, it, YBC is a year-round program, but our summer programming, uh, the, uh, uh, the sign-ups for our summer programming start very soon. Um, you know, and over the past three or four years, we've actually had a waiting list for the kids that want to get into the program. So, you know, if you have a kid out there between the ages of 11, eight, and, 11 and 18 that want to be, become part of a leadership program that engages, that's engaged in the community and really makes a big difference, you know, please contact the club and we'd love to get your kids signed up. So. And, you know, we say this every year, but I have to bring it up every year that, you know, what a wonderful thing to put on a resume for someone who hasn't worked in the past, someone who needs some references for something when you're out job searching or looking for colleges. You know, what a wonderful thing oh. to have that right on your resume that you were a member of the Youth Volunteer Corps, that you helped 20 nonprofit mm -hmm. groups in the summer, all the um, different things that you did to help those groups. I mean, what a great thing. You know, and, and the kids get to meet a lot of community leaders as yes. well. So they build their reference and their resource bases. Um, you know, and it's just, it's a great program all, all around just to get the kids engaged and out of the house and into the community and being active. Yes, and surveys, we're doing surveys. Yep, um, this year the Boys and Girls Club nationally um, is doing a, it's called the NYOI, which is the National Youth Outcomes Initiative. And this is a way for all Boys and Girls Clubs, the 3,300 plus clubs nationwide, um, to kind of streamline what they're doing and um, more accurately uh, produce programs that's designed right for the kids. Um, it's a uh, where we have surveys that are coming out, and we're going to be there's a lot, thousands of kids nationwide will be taking these surveys. But for us in a small grassroots program like our Boys and Girls Club, it's uh, it's a great way for us to um, see what the needs are of our kids and our parents, and really. Um, kind of align what we're doing with exactly what, what kind of resources they need. So, you know, to appeal to all the senses, we really want to, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for the kids to put their input into their club. It would be because every town would have a different need, different resources, different um, aspects of the mm -hmm. survey. So that'd be pretty interesting to see it all put together sometime too. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it, it's going to be a very timely event, but it's a, it's a very useful event for the club. Okay, dental hygiene kits. Um, this year we actually are partnering with uh, Walmart um, nationally and with um, Crest to provide dental hygiene kits for kids, um, which you know includes floss and toothbrushes and toothpaste and some um, some pamphlets and literature on you know how to keep 
uh, how to practice good oral hygiene. And uh, you know, it's one of those one of those uh, aspects of you know of hygiene that kids may just you know think it's it's a lazy thing. You know, we're we're just going to skip brushing our teeth this morning, or you know, maybe we're not going to do it after we eat tonight. But it's one of those very important aspects to you know yes. to hygiene. So you know, whatever we can do to produce and to help help with that, we're going to, and we're excited to be able to have these partnerships and yes. you know. Hopefully, hopefully thank you, we Chris. Get, thank you, Walmart. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, dental health is so important to your overall health of your entire body. Mm -hmm. So many things can happen and start in your teeth. So it, it can be an indicator for uh, a lot worse things that yes. are going on in your body. Yes, so, it sure can. You know. Okay, we're we're slowly running out of time, so we're going <laughs> to jump to the bowling fundraiser. We always think we have too much time, but. Um, the bowling fundraiser is going to be March 14th okay. um, next month at Thunder Bowl Lanes. It is, uh, right now we're actually, uh, we're really contacting a lot of sponsors. We're getting a lot of donors. Um, like I've said before on this program, we live in a very supportive community. Yes, we and, do. And, uh, you know, it's been wonderful when we make a phone call and they want to help us out monetarily. Um, so, you know, we're, this is a big fundraiser for our mentoring program, which produ produces a lot of uh, community-based mentors and lunch buddies um, in the uh, community. So, you know, it's a way for us to, um, uh, provide more for our mentoring activities and provide more resources and uh, hopefully engage more people to become mentors in the community. Five people on a team, bowl one game, have fun, just get in, get out, enjoy, meet other people in the community that are supporting the Boys and Girls Club and have fun. Yep, we have lots of prizes, lots of door prizes, everybody gets a free t-shirt and you all get to leave knowing that you've helped out a great program and helped out the Boys and Girls Club in Valpina. Okay, and we want to put a little teaser out there now. Your annual dinner <laughs> raffle is coming up May 9th. It'll be at the Aplex. Um, it's going to be a techno raffle this year. <laughs> yep. Just a little teaser. But the thing we want to do is let people know we're looking for donations for uh, um, silent auction items. And the is there a live auction too, or just silent? No, just a silent. Just auction. a silent auction. So we're looking for items for that. If you have a service you can provide, if you have a hobby, something you do, please contact the Boys and Girls Club. And um, good way to showcase your stuff and let it be used for a, a great cause. I'm also looking for an MC that would like to host the event. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll um, keep that in mind too. <laughs> So, absolutely, and this is our big fundraiser of the year. So this is the one we put a lot of attention on, um, and you know, businesses and donors will be seeing something in the mail very soon. Okay, we want to thank you very much for being here. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be right back with some information from Alpina Civic Theater. So please stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. As promised, my last two guests are both from Alpina Civic Theater. I have Pat Jocks and Matt Southwell. Hi and welcome. Hi. Hi, Nancy. So glad to have you here, Pat. It's been a long time since you've been around, and I'm excited to hear about firebugs. I mean, just listening to the two of you talk, it's going to be a great production. <laughs> well, we hope so. Uh, I selected the play. It's an absurdist, a little different genre of, of uh, theater, but uh, kind of doing it as a tribute to Bill Maxwell. Oh, awesome. Bill was, uh, Bill and his wife Sue have nurtured the theater for yes. years. Years and years and years. He got me into the theater originally in the 69, 70 year. <laughs> and I think we produced this very play in 71. Wow. So uh, this is a revisit on, a, on an old favorite that's an absurdist play. I was uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are, uh, the uh, San Antonio Theater, which is a big theater, opened their season with this show. So I thought maybe I was the only person in <laughs> the Midwest that had selected this, but come to find out a, a number of theaters around the world are uh, producing Max wow. Frisch's uh, The Firebugs. Okay, so tell me about The Firebugs. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's funny uh, in a way. Um, most dramatists would probably categorize it, uh, categorize it as a tragic comedy. It's it's funny, but uh, it's not that funny. <laughs> and uh, when you think about it. <laughs> it was written originally uh, as a response to the appeasement policy uh, that Britain used prior to World War II with Germany, and uh, ignoring, of course, the fires which are inevitable. Uh, that are going to break out uh, in a world war. So uh, Frisch, who is a uh, uh, German-speaking Swiss, uh, wrote a kind of a rebuttal to the war. This came out originally in '46. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, 
if you have that stuff in mind, of course, you can apply it to the plot. But uh, Alpena is a very cultural town. And uh, uh, it's a tribute, really, to the people here to support as many theaters as we have. And of course, yeah. they're quite sophisticated theater goers. So I'm not going to presume to give them the moral of the play. Uh, they can arrive at that. Uh, whatever that is, themselves, but uh, I think it'll be an enjoyable and a little unusual experience. Okay. It's kind of like uh, modern art on the stage. Ooh. Now, Matt, you said this is one of the toughest roles you've ever performed, and you've done a few. Yeah, well, I mean, when I was in graduate school, I, uh, I was, it, was, it wasn't your normal fare. We did a lot of, I mean, uh, the, our acting, head of acting was Charles Merowitz, who founded Dumb. Um, Circle on the Square in London with Peter Brook, one of the most famous in London besides the Royal Shakespeare Company. And, you know, so he demanded dense material and you really had to work very hard. It wasn't ever, nothing was ever on the surface. You had to spend, you know, weeks and weeks. And then you'd perform the play anyway and people go, what was that? You know, I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know. You know, I worked on it. But I mean, honestly, it's very difficult. The, the material is very dense and to find a way to make it, you know, human and, and, and even funny, bring out the funny, in the funny, you know, Pat hired me because I always go for the cheap seats anyway. <laughs> I have no shame. But, uh, <laughs> But but honestly honestly it is you really got to do tons and tons of script analysis to because there's re repetitive themes in it and you've really got to understand that uh -huh. as opposed to you, you just can't just learn your lines okay you know and it's not just about learning your lines and developing a character and well I mean it is as at its basic sense it is but there's more to it if you really want to convey the message of the play you've got to dig a lot deeper now what character do you play <laughs> I play Sepp Schmitz. Okay. He's a German arsonist. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I've made him German anyway. <laughs> he has become German. Okay. Because <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> it's it <is> funny. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I, I play one of the arsonists. All right, so tell me who has some of the other major roles. Okay. Uh, Gottlieb Biederman, uh, the, pretty much the protagonist of the play, uh, played by Doug Neergarth. Okay. And I've uh, watched Doug grow as an actor over yeah. the years. He's a fine actor. And uh, I have Terry Carlson uh, of Wit fame and, uh, and uh, Little Foxes. And she's playing Babette, the mother. Uh, I got a couple exciting young actors. Yeah, really. Anna Metke plays Anne, Anna the maidservant, which is a great little part. And of course we have Matt here, <laughs> Sepp Schmitz, hello, <laughs> and Joe Rabarczyk, uh, another young actor in town, a great actor, uh, playing Willie Eisenring. Those are the arsonists. And then rounding out the cast, we have Rick Metzler, uh, Donna Gilmet, and Zach Clement, who is a leader of a Greek chorus. This play has a Greek chorus yeah. uh, of firemen. Okay. So. <laughs> Instead of your traditional, uh, you know, Greek garb and masks, etc., uh, these guys will have fire hoses, axes, and helmets. Oh, very good. <laughs> so we have to bring it into the. They're going to sweat the 20th a lot. Century. Well, your sets are always so wonderful. Everyone talks about the sets; they're always the best. So. This will be a nice set. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, some of the choral members: Randy Bouchard, Bruce Mishaw. And uh, Dwayne Byer of oh. uh, Lincoln, Lincoln fame, uh, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Um, the set was designed by Gene Ryman, okay. with a little bit of input from me. Uh, Evelyn Hunter is our producer. Judy Byer is our uh, ever vigilant stage director and manager. <laughs> Jake Kettler, who is a trained. Uh, thespian of very high, very high degree. I don't know if people in the town realize uh, what a resource Jake Kettler is. He's doing the lights. And uh, then I have Adam Pruszynski, uh, Tom Robson uh, doing set, and Gary Gorin will be doing the sound. Okay. Well, before we get too much further, how, when can we come to see it? Our uh, production dates, <laughs> March 13th okay. to the 16th. And then the next week, March 20th through the 23rd. And performances go up at 7.30 in the evening 
for the Sunday performances, okay. 2 o'clock in the afternoon for the matinees, $12 for adults, $8 for children, and the box office is 356-3624. Very good. We have about one minute left. And we want to. the thing we want to make sure everyone knows is that these productions always sell out. You always sell out. So please call. Get your tickets now. If you don't, you won't get a chance to see it. And just listening to the two of you, I know it's going to be a great production. Thank you, Nancy. And I, I, again, I'm really honored to, to work with a cast like this because uh, seldom... You know, in a smaller town, do you uh, get this much experience? <laughs> I counted it up. They have 350 years wow. of stage experience. Uh, it just the leads. Feeling old right so. now. <laughs> it's my first play in 16 years. Oh, my so goodness. I haven't been on stage in a long time. Well, good for you, Matt. So, um, That's I'm, exciting. Yeah. Well, on stage doing acting. Well, yeah, I did film and stuff yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. But it's my first time on stage in 16 Ooh, years. Oh, wow, so I'm wonderful. Really excited. Yeah. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got me. What a town time. I want to thank both of you very much. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joint and following these messages. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Olin Joint, president of Alpena Community College. My guest this morning, Mr. John Saya. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for having me, Dr. Joint. And, and your official title, as you told me, is a mail technician. Yes. Uh, yeah. Otherwise known as mail carrier or mail man. There you go. What yeah, are the technical simple. aspects of, no, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll just go with the mail man. Right, That's yeah, a little good. bit of everything. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, you are universally uh, appreciated uh, on our campus as a bringer of good cheer as well as the mail. So let me compliment you at the outset uh, wow. uh, for that reputation. Thank that, you very much. Uh, there, you, when you walk in the room, people's spirits pick up, yeah. and that's great. Uh, but how about a little bit about your background? Uh, were you born and raised here in Alpena? Yes, I was, Dr. Joyton. I was born and raised in Alpena. My dad ran two businesses, a bar and a gas station, and I went to Alpena Catholic Central, and then I went to Alpena Community College for a year, and then I got drafted, and I spent two years in the service, and I came back home, which branch of the service? The Army. Okay. Very good. And Were you I transferred overseas? or yeah, I was transferred over to Germany for 18 months That's in an armor unit. Very good. And um, Well, thank you for your service to our country. Well, thank you very much. And then I came back and I got a job at Fletcher Paper Company and for 25 years. And uh, you know what happened there. They, right. they went under and uh, the college was kind enough to offer me a job. That's great. And I took the job at the college. So you started working for ACC in... O two or O three? O two, O one, some Very I think O two, O one, Doctor Joint, and I don't know for sure, but somewhere in there. Oh, okay. And um, been the mail technician, and then trustee Florence Tibbetts started a recycling program too. Yes. And so I kind of take care of that and see that for the college, and uh, and I take care of the vehicles and uh, turn around and go. Uh, give the people a piece of candy and a kind word every once in a while. You, you do all of that so well. well I'm glad you mentioned well, uh, the, the uh, recycling program. Well, and, and, uh, that was a big thing for you, Florence. You uh, often see you going around picking up the paper or the yes, other uh, the cardboard, uh, plastic, that, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, 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 good for you with yep. all of that stuff. Um, you, you observe a lot of things at ACC <laughs> as you make your rounds. And uh, let me just put it, the question this way. What kind of atmosphere or environment do we have on our campus. Oh, the, the, the faculty and even the, 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 the big guy I got to stack up for is Mike Colleen. He does a wonderful job at admission specialist. He's real good. The kids always even comment to me on what he does for the college and how he handles things. He's a real cheerleader. Oh, he knows he's, his he's stuff really down to earth. He works doesn't really it, hard. He to... works very, very hard at what he does. And, and the students really do appreciate that. That's good. And they appreciate the teaching. Now, his job is to uh, reach out uh, to schools and other audiences to try to interest people uh, in coming to ACC for education yes. and help them get through the admissions yes. application registration process. Yes, that's, yep. So he's often the first point of contact. Yes, it is. Have. Yeah, yes, and, he is. Um, um, you know, sometimes I. Uh, encounter people who tell me, well, I finally did come to ACC, but I surely had some trepidation, some reservations um, that, that inhibited me from taking that step. Um, uh, is there any reason to have those kind of fears? No, I think I think like like the younger kids coming out of high school and that they they say it's like even even starting your real life after high school, you know, and you you you're starting a new journey in your life. That's and right. once they get there and you make them feel comfortable. They find out 
that it's it's a real easy journey to take. Right. And you got a good teachers and you got good people to talk to. You know, we got a, we got a lady there from Syria, and okay. uh, she's she's young, and she came from Syria, and she's living with her uncle, and she really likes the way the college handles the different problems she has, yeah. and 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 working with her and different things. I met a student from Russia uh, last night at a, a museum function. Yeah. It was pretty interesting to yeah. to hear his story, how he arrived. Yes, here. yeah, a different culture now. Yes. I mean, than before. Yeah. So to be able to uh, interact with people from other parts of the world. Oh and help them be comfortable and have, yes, have a I good mean, time, this is, that's great. Yeah, it's great for the college and great for the people. And I know yeah. as you walk around the campus and spread cheer, it's not just <laughs> limited to, to employees, it's also students. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the students especially, you know, you give them a piece of candy or a kind word or just you'll know, give them a, a joking with them, it means a lot to them, you know, it well, just kind of opens the door. It does, and there's a lot of research that shows that um, the main factor between a, a person who comes on a college campus, gets started, uh, and then uh, sticks with it versus those who drop by the wayside is those who stuck with it, somebody reached out to them. Somebody had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Right. Somebody noticed them, right. uh, you know, talked to them as an individual. Right. And so it's right. as important for right. Uh, you to do it as it might be for me or an yeah. instructor or a yeah. uh, member of the financial yeah. aid staff or Mike mm -hmm. Colleen. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's nice for any of us. We all like to feel welcome or we like, right. all like to do, just you know, be treated like we like to be treated people. You that's know? right. That's so right. it works out nice. Yeah. That's good. Yep. In, in an age of email and other forms of electronic communication, uh, is there still a lot of correspondence with the hard copy stuff? Yes, there is. There's a lot of that that goes on yet, and everything else. But uh, it's like, like I said, um, even even with the students, even uh, they they find out the one-on-one -on -one is the way to go with people. Yes, they, that's they, right. they really like that. They, that's right. Yeah, I think we all do. Just even from past generation and everything else. Right. It's, Yep, on so. the recycling program that you work on, uh, where do you take the materials once they have a they have a place, yeah. Dr. Joyton, oh, US 23 North, and I think it's ran by Lee Sprague's son now. Okay, and they take basically everything and they recycle it and everything else. That was a big thing for trusty Florence Tibbetts and yes. uh, about five, six years ago. And it, instead of going into the dumpster, it saves the college a lot of money instead of going into a dumpster it, and, and, and the landfill. The it dumpsters goes, fill, up, uh, oh, yeah. you, so, fill up so fast. Yeah, you, you can fill up a dumpster much. like once a day with the right. stuff that I do recycle. Right. Yep. Very mm -hmm. good. So do you truck it? Out there, on yes, we we'll use a college or? vehicle and truck it out there. And, right. and just uh, curious, do we get any payment for the no, what we drop off? No, but they uh, uh, we don't get any payment, but it, again, it doesn't go to a landfill. So. That's good, yeah, that's good. Yep. So, well, on lots of different fronts, you perform many valuable services. You're uh, too, for kind, ACC. Dr. Joy. too uh, kind, Dr. Joy, too kind, and it's always a pleasure to see you as you make your rounds. And yeah. thank you very much for being my guest. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you, right. Doc. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This has been Talk of the Town with Nancy Smitham and Dr. Olin Joynton. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on Community. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.